10 o'clock, 10 o'clock. So everybody, welcome. We are officially live in this success formula system. So here's what we're going to do. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to talk about the perfect day formula. We're going to talk about the 3C formula. We are going to talk about the five rocks that you need in your life. And we are going to talk about the five rules for a perfect morning routine. That's actually, it was better before. Yeah, just down and flat. Perfect, perfect, just like that. We're all good. You don't want to see the MacGyvering we got going on here, but we have it perfectly set up so that we're going to go through and teach you those success formulas over the course of the day. So you might be thinking, if you haven't read my book, Craig, what the heck is the perfect day formula? Well, listen, the perfect day formula is not where you sit around in a hammock and you drink margaritas all day. That's the Margarita Day formula, which was my other book, and it's really, really good, really important, but it's not what we're going to talk about today. Today, we're going to talk about how you can become more successful in every area of your life using the Perfect Day formula and the formulas within the formula that help you make you more successful. But first, let me tell you a little bit more about myself, a little bit more about my business, Early to Rise, and what you are going to learn today. So for me, I have been in the early to rise world since 2011, but it's been around since longer than that. So early to rise was a website that was started in 2000 by my mentor, Mark Ford, and I bought it from Mark Ford in 2011. And there's an amazing story that goes with that, that I'll tell you near the end of today's presentation. But first, a little bit more about me. I started off in the fitness world. You may have heard of my fitness program, Turbulence Training. It's something that I spent a lot of time on. I spent over a decade sharing it with the world and helping 10 million people get amazing results around the world. Just, just let me know, have you ever used Turbulence Training? I'd love to hear what kind of results that you got. So just tell me where you used it, whether you're using it in your garage gym, whether you're using the bodyweight workouts all around the world, whether you were taking Turbulence Training to the gym and showing all the other people there. I'd love to hear how you use Turbulence Training. So that's what I did for a long time and I had some great success with it. Unfortunately, I also had a lot of struggles with it that I'm going to talk about today before we get to the 3C formula. So I need to tell you my story. Now you might not be able to see the slides perfectly, but we're going to go through them here. We're going to talk about how your, you probably can't see this one at all, but what it says is how to make 2017 into your best year ever. Now it all starts with the 3C formula the five rules for your morning ritual, and then the five pillars for getting exactly what you want in life so that you can have a perfect day. That's what we're talking about here. But more importantly, I want to show you this guy, and I'm sure you can kind of see that picture. It's me in 2005, and it's right before I had my anxiety attacks. So this is what it looks like when you're about to have anxiety attacks. I was a young man. I was really fortunate. I had everything going for me. And because of that, I suffered from what I call the paradox of freedom. I had too much freedom in my life, just like rock stars and movie stars. You might have heard about Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp has done some amazing things with his money. And by amazing, I mean absolutely bad. So one thing that he does is he spends $30,000 a month on wine, which I can understand. I mean, I guess if you're really into wine, you're buying some high-end bottles. I mean, that only, might only be like five or six bottles a month. Of course, that's way too much money. But listen, you know what else he did? He spent over $2 million to shoot Hunter S. Thompson, the author's ashes, into orbit. He, because Hunter S. Thompson wanted an explosive funeral. Isn't that crazy? That's the paradox of freedom. When you have nobody around you saying, hey, listen, you can't do that. You can't do that. So have you ever suffered from the paradox of freedom where you just don't have any rules in your life? Maybe you did as a college student and you'd wake up late and you drink too much at night and then you kind of be like, oh, where did the last three months go? Well, that's what was happening to me. With Turbulence Training, the success of the program online allowed me to quit my job as a personal trainer. And so I went from working set hours to working every waking hour of the day. And it really led to having me 
uh, giving me a lot of stress and anxiety. So if you're an entrepreneur, you probably know that feeling. Have you ever felt like that? That where you have too much freedom and you're working too much and then your spouse or your boyfriend or your girlfriend, they say, listen, you're working too much. I thought you wanted to have your own business so that you could control your hours and all you do is work. If you've ever felt like that, you're not alone. So, you know, let me know. Let me know what you're thinking. If you have questions, please ask your questions along the way here because we're going to do Q&A sessions at the end of each of the three segments. So what I had was the paradox of freedom. And the paradox of freedom brought me crippling anxiety attacks. I was working too much. I was going out too late at night. And the two of them combined, they actually sent me to the emergency room twice at the age of 30 looking like this guy because I had too much freedom and then I had the anxiety attacks. So what happened next? Well, then I had to go and put more structure into my life. And you might be thinking, I don't want more structure in my life. I don't want more rules and systems, but I'm telling you what, if you have an iPhone, you are looking at something that has powerful rules in place. Even if you have a seven-year-old Blackberry like me, it still has a powerful operating system. And that powerful operating system allows it to do amazing things. So the more structure your laptop, your MacBook, your iPhone, all of those things have, the more successful they are going to be, the more they're going to allow it to operate amazingly. So that's what we need to understand. Now the next thing I want to share with you is once I had that structure in place, I was able to overcome the anxiety. But I also had to do a bunch of other things. So after I went to the hospital, I realized I need to improve my health. I need to put in place the five pillars, the five rocks of success. And I'm going to teach you about those at the end of this session in a way that you've never heard them explained before. But I also went and did a whole bunch of stuff I didn't like to do. I went and did yoga, meditation, Qigong, all of these things because I knew that they would help reduce my stress. And one of the funny things is I had to learn how to breathe properly. So here I was, I was 30 years old, look at me, you know, I'm like a professional breather, man. I'm going to go pro at breathing. I've been doing this for 30 years. And you know what? I was doing it all wrong. I was doing it all wrong. It actually made me more stressed out. It made me like almost crazy because I was breathing through my upper chest, short, shallow breaths, hunched over at the computer like this. And when you do that, you increase your adrenaline. And when you increase your adrenaline, you get more stressed out. Have you ever felt that way? Have you ever had... Oh, a busy day and you just like you feel like oh there's a burning sensation in your chest that's the way I felt when I had my anxiety attacks and then I went to the meditation the yoga the Qigong which is like this weird thing where you just like it's standing meditation I didn't like it at all but I learned how to breathe in through my nose big belly nice and slow out through my nose and if I get stressed out now and I do six of those breaths taking about 10 seconds for each one it takes my stress levels from here down to here like that. Seriously, in a minute. It's really that powerful. So I learned that. But then I also did something else. I went and bought a dog. I went and bought a dog because I read that petting this little chocolate lab here would help reduce my stress and anxiety. And you know what I found out? These guys make it worse when you get them. These little puppy dogs, they're, they're really cute. But listen, I didn't know what I was doing. I went and bought this dog. It's like if someone just showed up with a baby one day and said, hey, here's a baby. Uh, eventually, you'll, you'll enjoy it, right? Imagine just getting that, no instruction booklet, no help from anybody else. Well, that's what I got when I bought the dog. So I drove from Toronto out into the big uh, countryside, and I went to this breeder, and they had a couple of puppy dogs left. They had this guy, and then they had this little black lab. And I was like, I don't know which one to buy. And then this guy comes over, he stands right beside me, he takes a little whiz right by my leg, and I guess he marked his scent because I took him home, and that was my introduction to Bally the dog about 11 years ago, right around this time of year. And so I brought him back to the big city, and I thought, okay, I'm going to pet this dog, I'm going to walk this dog, it's going to reduce my stress and anxiety, I'm going to feel amazing. And you know what? That's what he did. So I'm trying to walk this dog and he's just sitting there like this. That's why I took the photo. Like this is what happens. I, I pull on the leash and the dog just looks at me like I don't want to do anything. So, okay. I was walking the dog around Toronto, pulling him around. Everybody thought I was probably abusing the poor little animal. And then the next day I thought, okay, if he doesn't want to walk, let's take him to the park. We'll play fetch, you know, I'll throw a ball. He's a Labrador retriever, right? 
Key word, retriever. I take him to the park, I throw the ball, he does this. He just looks at me, nothing, nothing, no dice. All right, drag him all the way back to the apartment. Okay, third day I got him, tiny little apartment in Toronto. I leave him there, I gotta go out, a couple meetings, I come back, all these nasty notes on the door. All these nasty notes from people who are saying, oh, you gotta shut your dog up, all he does is cry. And it was, you know, the poor little guy had this separation anxiety. And I realized I bought the dog version of me. So it made things worse for a while. But eventually, this guy became one of my best friends. He's amazing. He's 11 years old right now, and he does reduce my stress. He's one of the best things in my life. So thank you to Bally the dog for the paradox that he brought in there. So just a funny little story to show you all the things that I was doing to overcome the stress and anxiety. And that leads in to our 3C formula. Because here's what I was doing. I was trying to put structure into my life to overcome the paradox of freedom so that I could get healthy again, so that I could get back to normal. And so what I realized was more structure equaled more freedom, putting rules and boundaries into my life. Now, if you don't believe me, there's a great author named Paolo Coelho, and he says it very eloquently. He says, discipline and freedom are not mutually exclusive, but mutually dependent. Because without discipline, we would sink into chaos. And that's what happened to me when I had the anxiety attacks, right? So if you are running around like a chicken with its head cut off because you don't have any rules, you don't have any boundaries, you're being reactive, that is gonna hold you back in life. That is where more people struggle than in any other area. But those people who are proactive, they're the ones that plan and prepare their days. They know how to go from busy day at work to busy home life, no problem without too much stress because they planned ahead. So that is all part of the 3C formula. Now, if you've read my book, you've probably heard me talk about it. And it comes from this book that I read called The Art of Living. The Art of Living is a translation of an ancient Stoic philosopher named Epictetus who lived 2,000 years ago, long, long, long time ago. And he has a great little phrase that was translated in that book and it goes like this. It'll change your life, it changed mine, I swear. Control what you can, cope with what you can't, and concentrate on what counts. So here, let me show you how I applied that to my life. I realized, you know what? I can't control this dog. I can't control him. I mean, I can train him a little bit better, but I can't control him all the time. And so I can't get stressed out if he doesn't want to walk or if he wants to chase a cat. I can't control that. All that I can control are my thoughts, words, and my deeds. I control how I feel, how I respond, all of that sort of stuff. And we can apply that to every area of life. So if, if you work for somebody, if you work with somebody, you can't control how they act today. You can't control if they're in a bad mood. You can't control if your boss is a jerk. You can't control those things. You can't go and push a magic button that changes that. All you can do is push the magic button up here that says, okay, everybody's acting a little crazy around me but I am gonna be centered here. I'm gonna think, well, how can I solve this problem? How can I not be crazy? How can I respond? How can I make this situation better? I control that. That's what I'm gonna focus on. So as soon as you start doing that, you'll be less stressed out, because you'll be like, oh, you know, that person, they're just acting a little bit uh, you know, crazy today because I know they got a lot of stress going on in their life. Or if you go outside and it's raining. You can't control if it's raining, right? I mean, if you can, you know, drop us a comment and let us know how you can control if it's raining or not. But listen, you go outside, it's raining. Okay, I got to walk three blocks. I got nothing. I got to get there in five minutes. I'm just going to go. And you know what? I'm not going to be upset. I'm going to make it an adventure. It's just like when I go through TSA. And funny story. So yesterday I go through TSA. And I was just at Fitness Business Summit. And my friend Brian Calicay, he gave me, gave me this uh, spice, this chicken spice from this city in Michigan called Frankenmuth because my mother loves going to Frankenmuth and I once told Brian that because he got married there. Anyways, long story, he gives me chicken spice. I'm going through TSA yesterday in Ontario, California and they take my bag and I'm like, okay, I've always got something in here. I know I don't have liquids in here, but what is it that set them off this time? They take out the chicken spice. They test it as an explosive. Chicken spice. You know, they open it up, they peel back the wrapper, they pour it out, they have two chemicals, and they put droplets of the chemicals on the chicken spice. And 
I was, I was muttering things that probably almost got me in r trouble with TSA even further, but I, I mean, I guess they were doing their job, but it was freaking chicken spice, right? And so I should have controlled myself better, but I did control myself. I can't control that they're doing this. I can't stop them. That's TSA's job, I suppose. So you can only control how you respond. So I could have done better, but I did okay. I didn't get thrown in jail. I didn't get second uh, secondary testing or anything. They gave me the chicken spice back and I'll take it home. And you know, I got, I got one more, no, I should have three more flights before I get home uh, and, and be able to go and, and uh, have dinner over at my mother's one night. So we'll see how many times I get pulled aside for explosive chicken spice and I blame it on, blame it on Brian Calicay. So anyways, I control what I can. Now I cope with what I can't control. That's the second part of the phrase. Well, listen, I can't control that they're doing this, so I'm just gonna cope with it, I'm gonna breathe, I'm gonna relax, and here's how we cope with what we can't control in real life. We're gonna look at a lot of these situations where, again, the boss is angry, there's a whole bunch of emergencies at work. What we need to do is in order to help ourselves control with that, or cope with that, is to plan in advance. So I want you to sit down, make a note, because you're not gonna do it right now, but over the weekend, I want you to look ahead to next week. And I want you to think about, okay, here are all the things that are gonna go wrong next week. I know on Tuesday I got that big meeting, and then I have to take the kids to soccer, piano, and some other thing. And it's gonna be seven straight hours, I'm not gonna get anywhere near healthy food, but I'm trying to stay energetic and lose some weight. What the heck am I gonna to do to overcome that? Well, I'm gonna cope with what I can't control by planning in advance. So I'm gonna control what I can, but there's going to be situations where I can't control and, you know, I'm going to have to, you know, I can't get out of those meetings. I can't control that. I can't get out of the practices. I have to go to that. So I'm going to cope with it by planning ahead. So come up with two solutions for every obstacle. And that's how you have way less stress in your life. Now, the third thing that you're going to do, the third C is you're going to concentrate on what counts. So we have so much structure in the day, right? So that we have more freedom at night. You know, you work really hard, you don't waste any time from nine to five so that you can leave on time and sit there and think, you know what, I got a ton of work done today, I accomplished so much, I'm able to go home, able to leave on time because I controlled my day, now I can go home and concentrate on what counts. That's why we work so hard and we're so disciplined during the day so we have true freedom at night. That's what this is all about. It's not about being a robot, it's about being proactive so that you concentrate on what really matters in life. And so one other thing, just in terms of all the craziness that's going on in the world, I like to call this the first world problem. We sit there and we compare ourselves to others. You know, oh, you know, Joe just got that new uh, BMW or that new F-150 pickup truck. Man, I sure like that pickup truck. I'd sure love to have that. Now I'm gonna be stressed out all day because I see pictures of his uh, F-150 pickup truck or BMW on Instagram. And this is why so many of us are unhappy, even though we have a really great pickup truck and we have Instagram and we have all these amazing things, but we just can't be satisfied because somebody else has it a little bit better than us. But when you use this 3C formula, all of that disappears. You control what you can. Well, I can't control what kind of car he drives. I only control what kind of car I drive. I control that I give my best at work and I add value to the world. And that's what really matters to me. I control my time. You know what? I can't see everything that's going on in his life. So I should just be happy with what I have. So I control what I can. Cope with what I can control. So again, I can't control if he has the nicest car in the world. In fact, I wish him the best. Because even if he had a crappy car, it wouldn't make my life any better. So I cope with what I can control. And now I'm taking all of that external stress that so many people have from trying to keep up with the Joneses and I've almost eliminated it. Because now I focus on what matters. I concentrate on what counts. I'm like, you know what, he's gotta work 12 hours a day in order to, order to have that car. He's gotta sacrifice time with his family. I get to go home at night. I get to go home at night and I get to be present with my family. So you know what, if I concentrate on what counts here, I have a really good idea of what matters. Isn't that amazing? Love that. Love this post if you are hearing what I'm saying about controlling what you can, coping what you can't control, and concentrating on what counts. Because a lot of people, they look at others and they say, I wish I had that money, I wish I had that home. 
But then you see, like, you know, we're talking about celebrities most of the time. Their personal lives are in chaos. And if you flip the switch, you flip the script, you look at your life, great family life. Yeah, you don't have $10 million in the bank. That's okay because you have a great family. You're concentrating on what counts. So what we want to do here is we want to make you as successful as possible, but we also want to make you enjoy your life, live a virtuous life, have a life well lived. So if you have any questions about the 3C formula, now's a good time to ask them because I think we're going to take a little break. I've talked a lot here, so I want to open it up to you guys. And I need to actually take my jacket off because it's kind of warm here. I'm going to roll up my sleeves for the next one too. So if you have questions about the 3C formula, you know, like how would I deal with XYZ in this situation, just let me know. Or if you've read the book, The Perfect Day Formula and the three C's have helped you, again, drop me a note there. We just want to hear from you now. We'll take your questions. So hopefully our team will bring in some questions. We got them coming in here. I'm going to get more relaxed. Woo. It is hot in the early to rise office in Denver today. Grab a little water. And listen, I have a very common question. So if you guys aren't asking your questions, if you're not speaking up, come on, let's speak up. But I have one for you anyways. Jala, thank you so much. This is our... Come on in here. So this is Jola, our editor. She sends out our amazing content every day, and she's brought in some questions. So 3C formula. What the heck are the three Cs one more time? So first one is control what you can, cope with what you can't control, and concentrate on what counts. That is just so simple, so powerful, so important. Remember, we control our thoughts, words, and deeds. That's where we start. Start every day like that. And that is so important. Now, the next thing that I get a lot of questions on is what happens if, what happens if your day just goes totally off track? You know, some guy sent me an email the other week. He said, well, you know, I'm trying to do all this stuff, but what if I get a flat tire? Well, what if you do get a flat tire? I mean, that's not going to ruin your entire day. I mean, you can't just, you know, go back to bed. We can't do that. So we have to get back on track. So here's the thing. Just like when you start your mornings, you want to have a routine in place. You want to have a routine in place that kickstarts your morning. And so when you get off track, you want to have something that brings you back, what I call a trigger, a trigger that centers you and kickstarts you to getting focused with the right activities. All right? So if you get off track, have something to put you back on track. 